here uh, along Baugh Creek in the Littlewood River drainage and uh, talking about a conservation project. There was a whole team of different agencies working together to put in about 120 beaver dam analogs and other kinds of structures similar to those. And the whole idea was to try to uh, restore the stream course up here on Baugh Creek, Sheep Creek, uh, parts of the Little Wood um, in the aftermath of the Sharps fire. So the idea with these structures was to slow down the water, slow down the sediment, and prevent the stream from blowing out in a year when you have a lot of snow melting on top of blackened landscape. In addition, experts saw the Sharps fire as an opportunity to test the application of using BDAs and similar structures to restore streams following a large wildfire. They liked the results so far. I'm extremely happy with this project. It's not like we were just restoring the stream, we were doing it after a fire, and, and that had never been done before. I would say these look great. The fact that this, especially post-fire, with the uncertainty of what runoff was going to be, runoff and sediment delivery post-fire, uh, having this still be intact at about the same level as the dam was pre is a really great sign. The landowners are happy too. Rebecca Patton and her husband, Tom, bought 5,000 acres in Baugh Creek to improve it for wildlife habitat. We were very interested in the intersection of that working lands orientation and conservation and wanted to show that we could do restoration that would benefit wildlife and livestock and be a healthy, sustainable way to manage the land. But it looks to us as though they performed the task they were set to do, which was to slow down the water and creating pockets where sediment could get caught, which would, again, begin the process of creating that meandering, beautiful stream that allows a lot of uh, riparian habitat to grow. The landowners had planned a stream restoration project on Baugh Creek previous to the Sharps fire. But after the 65,000 acre fire occurred, restoration experts decided to expand the scope. So it presented what we think is an opportunity to actually accelerate the restoration of a degraded system. Because we're gonna have more flow coming down um, because of reduced infiltration rates um, after the fire, we're gonna see more water delivered to the channel, more sediment delivered to the channel, and ultimately those are the tools for that it needs to help heal itself with a little help from us. After the Sharps fire was extinguished by the BLM, Mineer worked with numerous agency partners to put a large-scale stream restoration project together in a matter of weeks. The nation's leading experts on beaver dam analogs, who are professors at Utah State University and run a private sector company, Anna Branch Solutions, were available to work on project design, following the landowner's objectives. A big priority in that was this creek Baw Creek, this three miles of creek that had been channeled historically um, to try to provide more pasture land. It, uh, there was no repair, very little riparian habitat. It was pulled, it just went in one kind of big canal as opposed to what it could be doing or historically would have been doing, which is to have really vibrant meadows and riparian habitat around it, which would not only support wildlife, but raise the water table and provide a lot healthier grasses for all animals. Upstream and downstream of the project area, there were natural beaver dams functioning just fine, so they worked on stream restoration in the middle. Anna Branch experts prescribed six different types of in-stream structures, including beaver dam analogs, debris jams, bank attached jams, and mid-channel jams. The partners went to work in early November. Oh, it took an army to get this done, and it's kind of the all hands, all lands approach where we bring everyone in, and it was a multitude of partners who were able to make this happen. The team of partners and volunteers installed more than 120 structures in just seven days. Staffers with the Fish and Wildlife Service and Idaho Fish and Game provided 450 posts for the BDAs, and Fish and Game had a hydraulic post pounder. Fish and game officials also cut up dead aspen trees killed by the fire to use for in-stream structures. Willows and other branches were used for BDAs as well. The structure self-seal with sediment and debris over time. 
Uh, we had somewhere in the neighborhood of 8 to 12 on any given day. Uh, we had volunteers funneling in and out of Ball Creek here. Uh, we had agencies out of, uh, out of uh, Haley, Trout Unlimited, Wood River Land Trust. In the winter of 2018-19, Mother Nature provided deep snow in the Pioneer Mountains that tower above. In the early spring, snowpack experts predicted 150% of normal runoff in the Little Wood River area. Fortunately, the snowmelt occurred slowly and nearly all of the BDAs and in-stream structures held in place. Going up and down Baugh Creek to check on results in summer 2019, Chauverdian likes what he sees. I think things look pretty good. Um, I'm actually surprised that as many of the structures we have are looking as you know, intact. I would have frankly expected a few more to be rearranged for us, so to speak. That's why we built so many. In the upper ends of Baugh Creek, we have very healthy beaver communities because it was not as damaged as this part of the creek. And our hope and expectation is, as, as this recovers, the beavers will recolonize down here. You know, once we get some additional aspen growth and, and so on, because it'll be really prime habitat for them. We have beavers to the north and beavers to the south. And this is a huge stretch a mile and a half or two miles, which would be great for them. And then they can accelerate the restoration process. The project also should benefit sage grouse and wildlife. In some of these, they call them emerald islands in the sagebrush sea. That's where all the critters congregate. And so sage grouse in particular, um, they're very dependent on these, these, these riparian habitats. In this very arid environment we live in, water is at a scarcity. Um, and so they will bring their broods down into these areas and like I said, they'll forage and they'll utilize the water sources in the shade and it's a place for them to go. And so it benefits the sage grouse and the 350 other species that utilize these sagebrush habitats. They also provide late season water for producers, cattle producers. If we can build these systems up and build that water table and build that riparian area and, and create, create that sponge, if you will, that will hold that water longer in the season, then it's not just a benefit to the sage grouse, but it's also a benefit to, like I said, cattle producers, wild ungulates that may come down to get a drink, and other critters that use these areas as a refuge in the hottest times of the year. Beaver Dam analogs are becoming quite popular as a stream restoration tool in Idaho. It's really taken off over the last year. So we've got little hot spots all over the state. The more area we can affect, the more benefits there are to, to the wildlife and the people.